Well, as you probably gathered, if you managed to survive the full 15 minutes of yesterday's video, I did run out of time. So, thanks for clicking on to part 2 of the Global Weather and Climate Report Edition 25. I was talking about the British Isles and I will basically start off where I finished yesterday. Very, very wet start to 2023 for the British Isles, of course. Well, most places, you know, especially to the west and southwest. As you can see here, this is a cumulative uh, precipitation for the front running, what, 12, 13 days of the month. And um, you can see here, it's, it's a classic west to southwesterly storm track showing up in this distribution of rainfall. Of course, western hills uh, of the UK capturing the heaviest amounts of rainfall, of course. And uh, we have the classic, um, you know, down downstream um, rain shadow. I was trying, I was trying to get racked my brains as to what uh, what that was, but yeah, uh, the rain shadow to the east of the mountains, whether it be the uh, highlands, the uh, southern uplands, you know, Cumbrian Fells, uh, North Pennines, the Welsh mountains are classic. Uh, you know, rain shadow there over eastern Wales and into parts of Shropshire and whatnot. Um, where it's considerably drier compared to what we have on the on the rain uh, burn side of the the hills, of course. So yeah, uh, very very wet conditions indeed, as you can see, and as you probably know if you live in these areas, of course. And um, what we've got is we have um several parts of of England and Wales in particular that has seen an entire month's worth of rain in the first twelve days of. January here, so that's quite interesting actually. Um, seeing this, so of course, let's remember what happened back during the summertime exceptionally dry, of course, very hot conditions as well. And what a turnaround this is turning out to be. Now, I'm going to be talking about in the next few days, I'm going to make a bold statement in the next few days about summer 2023. So, do check that out. Maybe that's a little encourager for you if you haven't already done so to hit that subscribe button. Also hit the no notification bell as well so you get a notification of each upload. But uh, I'm going to be talking about El Nino and uh, even some early thoughts. Yeah, even in the middle portion of this winter, I want to start talking a little bit about my hunch for summer 2023. And I think it could be quite different actually to what we've seen in recent times with, of course, the ongoing La Nina situation. So, of course, if you live in these areas of the country, you don't need me to tell you how wet it has been. But, yeah, we have got, I believe, a big turnaround taking place between the first half of the month, which has seen exceptionally warm conditions across Europe, across many portions of Central and Southern and Southeastern Asia. North America is boiling away. Very cold across Greenland, of course, with the, the positive North Atlantic Oscillation uh, supporting a, a strong deep negative up across the North Atlantic and a strong ridge of high pressure around the Azores here. Classic textbook positive NAO signal here. And what's interesting is, look at the ECMWF now. This is for the front running seven days for Europe. And we have got pretty much all of the British Isles, with arguably the exception being the southeast of England, being below normal for the next seven days. But look at the turnaround here. Remember the cold that was seen over the eastern portion of Europe during the first week to 10 days of the month? What a change that is compared to what we've seen. But if you look at the equatorial view here, this is the, the planetary view, uh, we have got a very interesting situation taking place. Now, look at where the cold is stacked up across the far north. Of course, we've got a tremendous amount of warmth here now across uh, the northwest of Russia here. Uh, but uh, this is where we are at the moment. So we've got tremendous cold across the top, warmth further south. If you look at the next seven days, we've still got very cold Greenland, very warm North America. Colder across the UK and across Ireland. Look at the, the cold across central portions of Asia. Much of Africa below normal, northern portions of Australia. Look at South America. That is uh, quite impressive cold as well. 
let's play through this ECMWF weeklies here and show you what takes place. The cold drops south and the warmth is replacing that. Now, to me, folks, that is a big deal. That is a big turnaround happening now. And the reason why I continue to beat this drum, the man Julian Oscillation is a big contributing factor to, to changing the entire hemispheric pattern with a buildup of pressure and warmth across the top. So the Arctic Oscillation is going negative, question mark still over the, the, the NAO. But look at how much area is covered in colder than normal conditions. That is very, very impressive indeed. And just an entire flip around. Look at the United States. Look at how warm it is for, for the period now versus where we're going to. So that is remarkable, um, if I'm being honest. And look at Greenland. It's warming up. That indicates a negative NAO signal taking place here. And... Uh, the CFSV2 is quite interesting, actually, because it indicates a cold or modestly cold front run in seven days, if you notice here, arguably average, even slightly above average, if you notice here, across the far south. Look at how warm it is across the uh, central and eastern uh, parts of the con continent. But look at week two. It flips back warm once again. Now, if we look at the ensemble here of the GFS, it's quite different, I think. So this is the front run in five days. You can see the cold. Let's have a look at the six to ten day period here. And that isn't flipping warm. So you notice here, still firmly below normal across the British Isles. Much of Ireland, especially the east. France, Spain, Portugal, central portions of Europe, colder than normal. What about the, the seven to eleven day? Still below normal, and yet the CFSV2 is indicating... A much warmer solution so in essence there's a lot of uncertainty with regards to the next couple of weeks here in terms of the pattern so is this something that kind of locks in or is it something that's transient that is going to be the big debate that is going to be something that we need to keep an eye on here let's have a look at the specifics of the ECMWF for the next uh, several days here area of low pressure now exit to the east 3 a.m tomorrow morning or is this an updated view, actually? This is, uh, you notice this is 3 a.m. this morning, yeah. So I've got that low exit, and we've got a cool northerly flow. Nothing exceptional, but cool northerly flow nonetheless. We'll get a little bump in the isobars, if you notice here. Later on this evening, temperatures are dropping out there at the moment here, but we do have the next system coming in. Next area of low pressure approaching the northwest. Look at the amount of rain that is piling in from the west here again encompassing the very wet areas southern scotland northern and western portions of england wales southern portions of the republic of ireland as well it's once this system exits to the east folks that is when the door opens up to colder conditions coming in with a northerly flow here notice here this energy this disturbance riding that northerly air flow area of low pressure here displaced to the south and the mm -hmm. uh, we could see some reasonable snow uh, totals uh, starting to build up across the northern half of the British Isles, I think. With this northerly flow, you don't really tend to promote a lot of snow further south. You tend to find that a lot of the hills, as that flow and any moisture that develops, a lot of it is convection, relatively warm seas, colder, it draws up that moisture and then forces it south. Usually as it forces, it gets driven south over the mountains of the north of Scotland it tends to dry out once it reaches the central belt we do tend to get that on the coasts of England and Wales where some of that moisture carries on but you tend to not find moisture penetrating inland with that northerly flow classic example was the cold outbreak at the start of December that was the case so continue to see this northerly flow according to the ECMWF notice here that the latest run of the model has that disturbed weather, that system to the southwest, never really reaching the British Isles, which is quite interesting here, kind of skirts to the, to the west or the south. Could see a significant snow event actually further south with this setup here, area of low pressure to the well to the east here. So we don't have a great deal of moisture source to bring heavy snowfall. So that's quite interesting to see. Then we'll have more disturbed weather coming in 
but that's a pretty decent area of high pressure centered over the azores if you notice here and that is a cold flow taking us out to the middle of next week then it's um the ecmwf does start to flatten the ridge force it south open the door to the atlantic once again but again again sometimes these details become a little bit foggy as we progress through next week because of the uncertainty in the models here let's have a quick look at the ecm or the gfs sorry and let's see what that's showing with regards to the next few days here so in comes that next system more heavy rainfall something we don't need in uh, many parts of england and wales of course it is a good thing to an, ex to an extent but the problem is you know spoiler alert if we get a lot of wet weather in the springtime possibly even in the summer this is the last thing we want to see because we go the other way instead of it being too dry it ends up becoming too wet and i think we're overdue that by the way so area of low pressure scoots on to the east open the door to the north uh, question mark over this disturbance here now the gfs is holding on to that system a little bit further north and with the cold air coming south the question mark is how much cold air is in place further south so parts of mid and south wales the midlands southern england as that moisture then involves with this it uh, connects up with this cold air does it engage enough to produce snowfall that is going to be something we need to pay close attention to but that's a very interesting scenario isn't it snow in the north snow in the southeast that is quite um interesting to see actually and then we'll continue to play through the loop that area of low pressure kind of just dumbbells around over the north sea if you notice here all the way through a good part of next week we're in that colder that northerly flow but with low pressure nearby that increases the chances of seeing snow let's have a quick look at the uk view here in terms of snowfall to see what it's showing as well we'll play through the the overview chart and i'll try my best not to run out of time so there's the wet weather person to the east area of low pressure eventually scoots onto the east as well then we've got areas of low pressure notice here let's skip back you can see here one area of low pressure to the north one to the south uh, heavy snowfall across parts of scotland if you notice here but cast your eyes uh, carefully to the system that's seen on the gfs at 977 millibars sitting over portsmouth heavy rainfall to the east of that where more warmer air is getting lifted north but of course in the back side cold air is getting wrapped in on, on the north and west side of the system certainly that would be an interesting scenario folks that would be a heavy snow event for the midlands of england here let's have a quick look and see what it shows it's showing snowfall through this the capital and in the east anglia in the kent as that system exits on monday something we need to watch we need to watch this carefully because that could be quite an interesting prospect and then you notice here the area of low pressure kind of like i say dumbbells over the north sea and kind of spins around stuck between the high to the west and the low to the east here snowfall wise how's it looking let's have a quick look and see real quick and go back to the current setup uh, we'll play through the loop you can see the snow starting to build up high ground feature if you notice here even right the way through sunday i'm not overly enamored by the central belt lowland areas and um, yeah it could be marginal then of course that system comes across the south we are seeing snow across parts of the midlands across wales not a huge amount if you notice that so we'll just have to keep an eye on this pattern as we go forward here let's have a look at the 850 temperatures here because again it's going to be marginal potentially in terms of how much cold air we have in place we'll play through the loop here you can see that area of low pressure exiting in comes the cold air as you can see here and then as we continue to play through to the middle portion of next week that area of low pressure may have a little bit of milder air associated with it then the gfs has milder air coming in towards the next weekend so that's quite interesting and i'll finally end with this a very interesting scenario the models continue to show that warming within the stratosphere this is the 10 millibar level and folks we're getting closer and closer and closer to the potential of a sudden stratospheric warming towards the very end of this month here it is doing everything it can bar a sudden stratospheric warming that there folks certainly looks very interesting to see the high and then of course this pulse of intense warmth do we see this complete in our collapse of the vortex good question keep it right here in markfoganweather.com on youtube 
and we'll continue to watch this pattern. Bye for now.